Okay, let's uh, look at what's happening here. This is the 10-minute chess lesson for beginners. And we've already gone through the tactics. It's very important that you practice your tactics every day and develop the ability to recognize when a tactic is always there or when a tactic is not there. If you recognize the possibility of a tactic, then you slow down and you actually do calculations. Just because you think the tactic is there, you don't play the move. You slow down, you actually do the calculations. And we've already talked about openings, our basic opening principles, which are place at least one pawn in the center of the board. You're attempting to control the center of the board, which is d4, d5, e4, e5, and all the squares that touch those squares. This is mainly accomplished by developing your pieces towards the center of the board, getting your king into safety by castling, developing your minor pieces first, then your major pieces, major pieces being the queen and the rooks. Once your minor pieces are developed, decide on a plan, and within that plan, where it would be best to place your queen. Once the queen is located, you'll be able to connect your rooks and move them to the file that's most likely to open. Some of the errors you want to avoid is do not bring out your queen too early. Do not move excessive numbers of pawns. Do not move your knights towards the edge of the board. Do not leave your king in the center of the board. And I think those are, if you can accomplish that, you'll no longer be a beginner. Of course, you got to accomplish it consistently. Having said that, what we're going to do now is look at opening play and how the opening play transitions into the possibility of tactics. Okay, here we go. This is actually a game that I played against the computer. And like we talked about before, is you want to get software that will allow you to play at different levels. This level was 1,200, which is in uh, the USCF, which is the United States Chess Federation, the low lower classes, and people are just starting out in tournament play, their skill level is still being developed. As a casual player or a tournament player, this is a nice place for you to begin at and start developing your skills, especially against the computer. Okay, here we go. I was playing white. E4, that's one of our basic principles. Black responded C6. This is actually the Kirokan opening or Kirokan defense to be exact. What Black is going to do, he's going to challenge my center with either, let's point this out, D5, pushing a pawn to D5, pushing that pawn again to C5, or pushing a pawn to E5, and in some seldom instances, even pushing F5. But this all has to be timed correctly and will be beyond the skill level of a beginner, but you might want to try it. But remember, in this defense, you have to establish a pawn either at D5 or E5 at the appropriate time, and still all the other principles apply. you got to develop your minor pieces, develop a plan, place the queen on appropriate square, connect your rooks, and proceed from there. Now, when your opponent does something like this, your job is to take total control of the center. If he'll allow you to place two pawns in the center and control these four squares, then that's what you do and see if he knows the appropriate response when doing a defense that has to counter your uh, center strength of your two pawns. Of course, the computer does exactly that. He places the pawn at d4, challenging my center. I develop my knight, which is in agreement with our basic principles and ideas in the opening for the beginner. He develops his piece. Now this might be a little questionable, because this allows me, and when we get to discussing the ideas, principles, in the middle game, you'll find this out, it allows me to take space. Space is very important in chess. The more space you have, the more mobility you have for your pieces. He has to underdevelop. He's interfering with his queen's bishop, 
which is interfering with the Queen's Rook. And because he attempted the defense involving pawn to c6, he's also in, interfering with the natural square of his Queen Knight. I uh, continue to develop. Now, he shows what he's attempting to do. He's attempting to challenge the base of my pawn chain, which, if your opponent has developed a strong pawn chain, is exactly what you do. Attack it at its base and try to break the chain. What I did was I fell back with my other knight, which does block in my bishop, but momentarily, I'm going to move that knight either to g3 or if he exchanges at d5, I'm sorry, if he exchanges at d4, I'm going to use the knight at e2 to take back at d4 and have a strong post for my knight. Usually, your opponent will not want you to establish a strong post with the knight. They'll try to avoid that, and so black does. He pushes up e6, which now makes it even more difficult to develop this light squared bishop. He's going to have to develop that bishop real soon and probably should develop it to b7. I established my complete pawn chain. So if he takes here, I'm thinking I'm going to take back with that pawn and go ahead and establish my knight at g3 because if he castles to the king's side, my knights will be ready to attack. He develops a piece as he should. I will develop my bish my dark squared bishop so that I can free the square for my queen's rook. I want the rook to be right there because there's a good chance that this file is actually going to be the one that opens if black should ever take at d4 and I'll respond with capture at d4. He does exactly that. I recapture. And now I'm in position to play my rook to c1. As we discussed, you look for open files for your rooks to attempt to control. He takes the check. we got to be careful. Is he playing out his queen early to a square where she can be harassed? And of course, given the opportunity, I will harass the queen. But it's kind of like underdeveloping my bishop. He selected to offer an exchange of bishops. Now, actually, it's not a good idea for black. The reason being, my center square, my center pawns are on dark squares. That means that this is my bad bishop. His center pawns are on white squares. This is his good bishop. And to, if we apply basic strategy, I probably should have exchanged off that bishop. But... I'm thinking this is also my bishop that is most likely to be in position to attack his king. Because this center is locked up, you really don't have to be in a rush to castle. As a beginner, you should, but once you develop your skills and your ability to see, especially tactical play, in a locked position, you can probably delay castling and do some other development things. I use my knight to block the bishop because I do not want my dark square bishop exchanged off, even though it is the bad bishop, but I think it's going to be useful in attacking the king later. He plays his queen back, so he just made one, two moves with his queen when he could have just went there in the first place. Now it's a debate of whether or not that is a good square for his queen because we've already discussed that a good square for my rook is going to be at c1 and he's placing his queen on that same file. So the rook at some point will have the opportunity to attack that queen or that queen is going to be forced to make an even additional move, which will be three tempos with the queen. I did not take the rook's position, I went ahead and developed my bishop. For what purpose? I'm prepared to castle to the king's side. And now both of these bishops look really good leading to the king's side castle, but he has not actually castled yet. A beginner in this position, adhering to the principles, will go ahead and castle. 
Now, an intermediate player or advanced player would be very cautious because of the possibility of attacking on the king's side. I mean, this pawn can travel right up the file to the king's side castle. Once this knight moves out the way, the queen actually has the possibility of coming to g4. The bishops are already in place to attack the castle position, and white has control of f six, where normally the knight would be to protect the king's castle position. Let's see what white does. I'm sorry, let's see what black does. He does, in fact, castle. So he's castling into a dangerous position, which illustrates that this is a beginner level and that the computer representing a beginner really isn't going into deep tactics. And, of course, when you don't do that, when you neglect the possibility of tactical play, you usually have to pay for it. There it is. So the bishop is sacrificed. This is only move 13. Black goes ahead and captures a sacrificed bishop. Now, if he does not capture, then you just pull the bishop back and he's won a pawn, at least a pawn. And the king is exposed. Check from the knight. The king did not have to go back to g8, but his other options were really bad, too. If he tries his best option, which is g6, then queen is going to b1, checking the king. The pawn is going to have to block the check. The knight will capture at e6, forking the rook and the queen. Because the, oops, I'm sorry, didn't mean to do that. Because the my opponent was not playing with tactical ideas, he did not see the queen coming to h5 with multiple threats. The response was to attack the knight, thinking that the knight would move back. But that's why you got to look at all the options of your opponents, as well as all your own options. The queen delivers checkmate. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Remember, practice your tactics. The first thing you want to do is get those tactics down to 30 seconds each. You're learning how to recognize tactical positions. Next thing you want to do is develop your opening skills. Up, start applying those opening ideas. Uh, very soon we'll talk about middle game uh, positional strategies because once there is no tactic available to you in the middle game, very often beginners get confused and just don't have any idea what to do. But we're going to solve that in our next video. Thanks for watching. And bye for now.